Hi guys, here's a little project I've been meaning to get back to for, well, years to be honest. Picked this up in a charity shop uh, a few years back. Um, it's got little, oh, better tell you what it is first, it's an electric stapler. And because it's pretty old, just about there... There were some sort of rubber or rubberized um, grommets that fell apart as soon as you tried to use it. They were so old the rubber had uh, de degenerated. Um, so that meant it didn't work. What we've got in there now is little rubber um, grommets that were the uh, mounting uh, points for hard drives, I think, something like that. A little rubber, like rubber feet. And they more or less fit, but they're not quite right. I'll just give you a demonstration. I can't remember if I've got batteries in there or not at the moment. No. All right, we'll put some batteries in. All right, uh, looks like that way. That way. That way. That way. Okay. I suppose before we go any further, made by Rexel. Uh, trying to see if it got a date on it. Four AA batteries, six volts, eight hundred milliamps. Model 112. Press load, recharger, apoya. Uh, yeah, right, I think. That's to release the tray to put your staples in. It actually works automatically just when you slide a piece of paper under there. There's a little micro switch just there, or the lever on a micro switch, and that makes it work. So, if we take a piece of paper, and folded it over so it's four layers. Okay. Now the problem at the moment is as you can see it does work but it's really not pushing down hard enough and that may be because there's too much flex in the rubber grommets that I put in there because they're not, not a perfect fit by any means. So I'm wondering what I can do about it. I could 3D print something but then the filament would be fairly rigid there'd be no give in it and that might be a problem because I think it relies on there being a little bit of slack in there or give to as a sort of shock absorber anyway we'll have a look inside I mean <laughs> you can see most of it because it's clear plastic deliberately so you can see it as you push that down that pushes on there which I think just switches it off so it doesn't actually operate when you're trying to change these bits. Let's just see if I press that button now, will it operate? Oh no, it's still operated. Oh, in that case, I don't know what that does. Never mind. What can we see? We can see Electric motor in there, the silver thing, drives that gear, which drives a bigger gear, which goes inside. Can't quite see, but it must drive another gear inside. Yeah, there's a hole whole gearbox there to gear it all down so that little motor can actually give it enough punch to drive 
that blue and the green are I've got a shaft going across so it's a cam that pushes there's an arm there that goes up and down just about see the silver arm there let's take it apart and see what we can see oh, we'll take the batteries out so we don't accidentally set it off while we're working on it I have done a tear down on this before I'm pretty sure I'll have a look in my files and if I can find the original video I'll put a link to it in the video description looks like it originally had four rubber tires on the bottom tires four rubber feet and one of them's only one of them's left see okay looks like this just unclips yeah cool, that's a bit stiff that is it it's just those four Clips. Back in the way. There we go. That was harder work than it should have been. All right. Well, now we can see inside and see the gears a little bit easier. I'm not going to take it apart. I drive it round by hand. That's very low gearing. You might be able to see this arm is moving slowly. Probably running it backwards. So, the bit we want to try and work on is these rubber grommets just here. So we can just push them off. Sure clips on them. You can probably see what I mean if I just push it a bit. It's a lot of slack there. It's not supposed to be that much slack. And I think that's why it's probably not driving it down fully home. that right and that will probably mm. so we've got to take off both sides and can we just have a look at that
had a chap commenting on my old video thinking about it. So it's definitely in there somewhere. I should be able to find my old video. Been commenting that he's actually found the right size grommet to make it work. Yeah, right. So my rubber grommet is the wrong size. And as I say, I could 3D print something that will fit in there, but it won't give the flexibility of the rubber. But that's probably my best bet at the moment. I'll take some measurements. 3D print a couple of little um, fillers, grommets. I can't think of what you want to call that, really. And see what happens if we do that. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel, and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.